Uh, so the Unreal Engine has a whole bunch of optimization tools that are built in, or I should say do diagnostic tools for seeing how your, uh, your project's running. Uh, so this is the level we've been working on for a little while that has some sequencer stuff and some animation stuff. Um, you know, I've, I've been looking at optimization for so long that I try not to get to a point where I'm making things that aren't optimized in the first place. So this might not have any like really like bad things. You're like, oh, it's you. You're the one through my frame rate. Uh, I can always import something that's not optimized and give you an idea. But uh, if I hit play and I hit my tilde key, it opens, opens up that little prompt and I can say stat FPS and that's my frame rate so the top number is how many frames per second and the bottom number correlates exactly to it it's how many uh, milliseconds it takes to render a frame if it takes eight minutes eight milliseconds to render a frame that is a hundred and ten frame rate okay um, for VR you want to keep it at 90 uh, 90 frames per second that is what the the headsets are designed for so if you go over to your General settings, I believe, and at the very bottom, instead of smooth frame rate where it could go anywhere between these numbers, you want to say used fixed frame rate and put 90. And literally, that's like how I fixed an entire project one time. It was like going all over the place, and just it'll ren render at 90. So uh, this goes edits your config files. So if you start messing with your project settings, you need to make sure that you keep your config files with your project. I know some, we've said that you can delete sometimes other folders, but keep it around. So now you see my experience is exactly 90 frames per second. 89.9 seconds or something. Rounding errors. Cool. Um, so, so that's, you know, that's the first thing. Um, now your computer, if you guys know anything about like the components of the computer, you have uh, a processor, which is like usually like an Intel processor or an AMD processor, and then you have a graphics card. And I'd say 90% of graphics cards uh, that are dedicated, meaning that you have an additional graphics card that's not part of your processor, is uh, going to be an NVIDIA card. And um, if I hit play again, instead of saying stat FPS, I say stat uh, tilde stat, I can say unit. And this gives me a whole bunch of information about how it's drawing. My project is getting. 11 milliseconds on the GPU, which is fine, that's 90, but my draw, my CPU, is only 3 milliseconds, so my, this project is actually technically GPU bound. It's the limiting factor for it. My uh, meshes are very tiny, and I don't have many of them all, at all. Meshes and using complex math on event tick are the ways you're going to ruin your CPU uh, frame rate, and GPU is all about complex shaders and um, and uh, some, some other, you know, kind of some particles and that kind of stuff. So those are some diagnostic tools. You can actually select these from right here as well. <clears throat> now, I think I kind of showed you one time when we were doing midterms how to look at different view modes. So there's wireframe, F1, regular, F2, F3 is unlit, F4 shows me where my lights are, and then this F5 is a shader complexity. So this is a GPU thing. If I had any crazy like transparencies, uh, transparency is the worst thing for VR. Um, it, it would just show up as white or red. If I had foliage, grass, that kind of stuff is always um, is always really complicated. And that's why you want to switch it to either be um, opaque or masked. So it's either invisible or visible, but it's not partially visible. That's what's hard to render. Let's just go over to foliage. Ah, uh, yes, we're painting eyeballs and pumpkins. What was that? <laughs> I think it's a skull. No, it's, a, it's an asteroid from our asteroid stuff. But if I had... Let's see if I have grass. Yeah. At this point, I can go ahead and add starter content. That's fine.
Nope, I don't have any grass foliage. There's a bush that'll work. So I'm only going to paint the bush and right here. Let's make a little denser. There we go. So now if I was to uh, look at this, hit F5. Let's do it through the menu. We can go to here and we'd say optimization view modes. We would look at shader complexity and you see all those transparent edges. Those are the things that get in the way of a good performance. And then the other main thing is you guys have obviously seen the thing where it says you need to build your lights. There's three kinds of lights we've talked about. There is, let me move back real quick. So there's when you pull, first pull it out, it's a stationary. Stationary means that it doesn't move, but it can flicker. Um, it's more performant than a movable one. A movable one means it's dynamic shadows, and it can flicker, and it can move. And then a static is actually the best performance because it can be baked into the texture. But you might have seen that if I have too many in a row, Sorry, I have too many movable ones in a row. It'll scream at me. There. It says, no, nah, can't, can't do it. Because it can't figure out that the lighting is too difficult for it to figure out. Um, so sometimes you have to change it to static if it doesn't flicker, and then you have to bake it. All right, so there says, no, can't do it. And this is just because they overlap. You see these edges here? If I move this out, from being overlapped with each other, then the complexity goes away. But again, I can also go up to my build and then do build lighting only. And this is how you bake lighting. And this will be um, using static lights that are baked is the best way of getting a good performance. Um, generally, you're allowed one movable light with shadows in VR, otherwise you won't get good performance. At least it was that way with the uh, computers a year ago. I haven't tried an RTX card, like a brand new computer. So this thing will open up a thing called the Swarm Agent, and it's literally going through and figuring out all the different ray traces from the lights and how it bounces off everything, so it can bake it in lights and shadows. And you can actually work on your level while it's doing this. If I add a cube here, Anyway, I could bake these and get rid of it, but uh, for some reason this world isn't showing, showing shadows. It might just be uh, some material settings or something. Okay, so uh, baking lighting, and so if I say uh, go to go to my 
optimization view modes and go to light complexity, you can start seeing where it's a complex lighting. Isn't that pretty cool view? So it's super complex where these things are really overlapping. Right? And it gets easier. Blue is good. So this would be very non-performant. I, I wouldn't have a 90 frames per second now. And then stationary light overlap. It shows there, this whole area. Cool. And then this is just quad overdraw, just means uh, too many polygons. So something over here is way too many polygons. Or there's too many polygons in a certain area. That's how we optimize. All right, so those are your few modes. And then there's just one other, there's two other things. If I hit play, let me cancel this lighting bill. That could have been why there was no shadows, there's no lighting bill. Um, if I were to hit play, and I can do tilt again and say profile GPU, this thing shoots out. This is a snapshot of one frame. Stop this. And you can look at, twirl, twirl it down and see what your problems are, uh, the, like what's taking longer to render. And in, in this case, it is all this thing, which is my, is lights. So like lights is the big one. And it even breaks breaks down to which light is the one that's doing the worst one. It says they're not shadowed lights. And then, um, so that's a, that's the profile GPU. Uh, this that's probably what I use the most. And then the other other thing is the underneath your developer tools, you have a thing called statistics. Maybe it's over here, statistics. And then this is just a text uh, view of all your primitive stats, so I can sort by which one has the most triangles. So this, my jack-o'-lantern has uh, 36,000 triangles, and there are many of him. So the, the sum total is 13 million po polygons. Uh, if you're doing a tethered VR headset, like an Oculus Rift, you want to have less than a million polygons in your scene. Right? Uh, so this is a cool way of finding out, like, oh, that thing that's tiny is a 4K texture. I can export the texture, put it down to 256 by 256, and then bring it back in, because there's 100 of them. That'll affect my scene considerably. So um, super useful tool, that's statistics. And the other one is textures, and that's exactly what I was saying. I can sort by the resolutions, and I can say, OK, this, you know, these ones up here at the top have the biggest uh, materials, and then there's also tons of them. Where is that? Like this one has 26 textures, right? But it's a small texture. So these are other ways of saying like, oh, you know, uh, I didn't realize that I'm using it that many times and it's that uh, unperformant. So this is another thing for optimization. I know it's super dry, but um, there's not much documentation on this online, especially all in one place. There's tons of other tools. The uh, dude that we um, stole the, the uh, meteors from, the tech art aid guy, he has a bunch more videos if you really want to get into it and uh, nerd out. Uh, I mean, uh, be useful, the engineer. So this guy, he talks about, in fact, one of the videos is already there, the graphics profiling. Apparently Intel makes a frame analyzer that's pretty sophisticated, so uh, I I had to watch these when I had to put something in the Oculus stores, three three videos, and uh, definitely definitely uh, something if you're ever going to put something in a store, you have to review. And then, uh, so all I'm going to do is show you uh, how to set up uh, an experience for like uh, going to a demo day. So if you if you want to um, 
be uh, showing people as they show up. You don't want them to just have experience running, right? You need to be able to start an experience, rewind it in case somebody's like, ah, I freaked out, they will walk away. You don't want to sit there and wait for the experience to finish. And oftentimes you're going to try to make an executable because an executable is more performant than running the editor because running the editor has to render the editor and the game. So you'll get a frame boost just by doing making an executable, which maybe I can show you that as well. So let me look at all my maps. And I have tons. So this one is my uh, pumpkin one. And this one's called VR map. And then I have the one I made for midterms, which is called in class. So I think I want to make a new map. And I'm just going to call this one. I'm going to make it black, empty. And all I need in here is a player start. And I'm going to create like some really quick text. And while this is opening, I also I'm going to take one particle system and put in there too. I'll tell you why. Specifically. Ambient dust. So ambient dust is these little little dudes. You see them? People love swatting on these in VR. So always include it in, in, in your opening level. People put on heads like, what, what, what? So this is where you. This is the the, the level where you wait for um, somebody to say, oh, you know, this is a story about my grandfather, and you're gonna be whatever. So you docent it, right? You talk to them. Are you comfortable? Is it strapped on? Is it is it clear? Is it you know visible? And then when they're ready, then you hit start on your phone. I know we didn't get very far with showing how to do the phone, but um, you know, or you can have a key press, and we'll do key presses really quickly on today. So I'm just gonna make a, a quick text object. Just say no text, no problems. So put it in the center, and we'll just say interactive arts. There it is. Maybe one at two different levels. Let's do it this way. Great. And then I want to make material put on there. Fantastic. Let's convert it to uh, polygons. Great, it's all ready for us to go. Export it, FBX or OBJ. Logo. Sure. And then we import it in. Assets. So now let's put this in the world, and here's my menu. You could be fancy if you want to, and um, make sure it's looking at it, or you could do a camera. A camera might be easier for you because you can see what it's looking at. Camera. So now I can pin it. And then move it where I want to. But what's wrong with it? I can't see it. This is why I couldn't see my shadows too. It's supposed to be lit. This one looks like I'm lit. This one looks like lit. There we go. That's why I couldn't see shadows. I don't know why. Anyway, because there's no lights in the world. So I can either make the texture unlit or we could do some dramatic lighting. Ask me dramatic lighting. 
there we go, there's all my shadows. They can be animated. Maybe a little backlighting. Emphasize depth that we can see inside. Maybe that's cool. And that's and that's pretty much it for the layout. With this camera here, I can move it so it's readable. There you go. So yeah, this is where you want to start, They're just on a loop, right? You maybe put a little sound in there, so like some spatialized sound, so you could say, you notice how when you turn left and look right, that the object has parallax, and you can see around it. This is how you have to talk people through this stuff, because a lot of people haven't tried uh, a VR before. You say, notice how there's sound emanating from uh, the logo. Turn your head left and right, notice that, uh, that the sound is coming from a position in space. This is how you'll be navigating the world around you. And uh, it's just like being on a, you know, uh, a flight attendant. The exits are here, 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 and here. You know, so I hit play. There it is, and I'm in a third-person mode, so I fall through the ground. Let's change that real quick. Let's see. Where's my? Maybe the camera player is here. There. And then um, if it was brighter or if we were in a headset, you'd be able to see the dust. You'd be like, ah, spot at it. Okay. Cool. So uh, now how do we get the uh, our project moving forward? It's really quick. It's uh, really straightforward. We're just going to do two actions. Actually, we're going to do uh, uh, three. The first thing I like to do is I like to add um, the, the function for quit because executable will not have a quit. So I put escape equals quit. So we can close out of it. The next thing I want to do is say play, right? So maybe you have an animation, you hit play and like a light flickers or something like that, right? So um, we'll say uh, P for play. We won't add a sequencer now, but we'll just open level. So now when we hit P, it's going to open this level, <coughs> which was our PR map. It is case sensitive. And then I like to do input, I like to use L for opening this level. It's really useful for um, resetting. So uh, L will be our untitled level, or you call it loading level. Actually, let me save a little bit. We'll call it loading. Great, and then. Oftentimes when you're doing installations, uh, the headsets drift a little bit. So there's a function for resetting orientation and position. So if somebody wants to watch the experience this way, you hit the button, and it'll all line up this way. If you want to do it this way, it all lines up that way. So this is handy to like, hey, I'm not looking in the right direction. So then you can reset it to whichever way they're looking. So I'll just do input R. And that is it. So I'm going to take this, save, <laughs> I go to my VR map, open this, and then paste it in here. <coughs> That's why I, have, I can navigate no matter where I'm at. I, I, I only select one node. <laughs> my god, it's about to kill me. Mm. Let's do this again. Mm. 
here we go. So that's all set up. We're ready to go. <coughs> so if I have my loading level, I hit play. Waiting for somebody to show up. Oh yeah, put on the headset. Look at the interactive dust. And then let's let's watch the experience. Play. Well then, sorry, be in there. Spacebar. I didn't pee for play, did I? Play. We'll go into my experience. And I'm like, oh, you want to watch it? Okay, we'll go back to loading level. Next person gets us in the chair. P for play, and then resetting the whole orientation and whatever. So that's just like a quick, straightforward way of doing some sort of loading level. Cool. And if I wanted to make this an executable, we go to maps and modes, and we make sure that when my game default is my loading level. Therefore, my executable will play this one first, but if I open up my editor, it'll open up the map I'm working on. So, that's great. Cool. And let's go ahead and say file package for Windows, 64-bit. Desktop. And if anyone, if you, you want to press anyone, you show this. Like, oh yeah, I'm just, you know, hacking the mainframe. <laughs> yeah. Super cool thing I'm doing, and, and depending on how big a project it is, is how long it'll take. The first time it, you build it, it'll be the slowest time, but then it starts storing those assets in another folder called builds, which you don't want to sync to your repo. Um, I'm not sure if this would package because we're using a spout plugin, which I don't think is built for executables. But anyway, that's the thing. And then uh, once it's done, we can hit spacebar and go. So uh, that's it for today, that's the last one. You now know how to package and optimize.